I'm really happy to do some rush again on the channel because it, it has been a while. I believe it is 20 episodes ago or something like that, but there we are. This is requested by Rogdo, I believe. Requested by Rogdo, and he wanted me to do the in the fifth studio album by progressive rock band Rush, who are Canadian, if you didn't know that. But yeah, A Farewell to Kings, it is a classic album by them. It came out in 1977 and it has been remastered on CD in 97, 20 years after its original release. Yeah, this album is surprisingly short. It is only 37 minutes long, so there isn't a lot to take in here, but the tracks that you get are really memorable and really special by the band. We only have six tracks on here, which are um, A Farewell to Kings, Xanadu, Close to the Heart, Cinderella Man, Madrigal, and Sickness X1 Book 1 The Voyage. So, you don't have a lot, a lot of tracks to take in here, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. It, it is definitely a bit of a underrated album or a bit of a overlooked album because it came out in 1977 and this was between Rush's breakthrough, breakthrough record which was 2112 and then the critical acclaimed and the fan favorite Hemispheres. So those are two really important albums by the band. Those are um, two albums that are considered the best in their discography. So if you release an album between that, this is a bit of the Peace of Mind record. It still is great. Yeah, Peace of Mind from Iron Maiden, of course. It is great, but that album was also between Power Slave and Number of the Beast. For some people, Peace of Mind is the best record, or for some people, A Farewell to Kings is the best record, because it is kind of underrated. But, but, when, but when I think of Iron Maiden records, I usually... Well... It, it is not to uh, bash a piece of mind or something because it is a great record. But I, but I think Number of the Beast, Power Slave, and then I by accident skip Peace of Mind. But because those albums are yearly, but I'm getting a bit of uh, I'm getting a bit sidetracked back to the record. This is one of those records. If you have um, if if this album has a dear spot in your heart or there's a close spot towards uh, your favorite records then this is definitely well a great record for that and this all uh, this album is a bit more uh, serious on some tracks like or uh, yeah a farewell to kings is an album that doesn't have a lot of tracks but the tracks that it has is are really memorable and are seen among the best rush songs so to get into the track listing a bit, we have A Farewell to Kings, the title track. Uh, this song starts really mellow, really acoustic, uh, from, from an acoustic guitar by Alex Lifeson. And then the song blends in a bit more uh, keyboard effects, or I, I believe the keyboard effects were in the 80s, but I'm not sure. Does Geddy Lee play keyboards on there? Um, bass pedal synthesizer, nah, yeah, it's not the same. Uh, I believe that he played the the keyboard in the 80s with moving pictures and signals, records like that. But he didn't play it on air. But A Farewell to Kings is a great opener. It is a bit misleading because... Uh, because the opening is really acoustic and really mellow. So you think you're in for a bit of a rock uh, or a bit of a soft rock album. But then the album gets a bit more heavier with, uh, with the great drumming from Neil Peart, which... Spices up the song a bit more. Great solos from like Alex Lifeson, which gives it a bit of a twist, which is a great twist at that. So the opener of the record is really great. Um, yeah, the title track as well. So for some fan fan favorite for me, it is a bit bit of the center point of the record, or it is a bit center for me just personally. It it is great, but um, it has better songs on it. It's probably my third favorite, I would say. Uh, my absolute favorite song of this record easily is also the longest one, which is Xanadu, the second track. This is also the favorite, the 
This is also Rockdo's favorite Rush song of all time. He just said to me in the comments. Um, yeah, he, he thinks that this is the greatest song by them. Although I, um, I've actually put it in my top 10 if you haven't watched the video. But this is really top 10 material for me. I still think that list is pretty accurate. Well, it, it has a lot of hits on it. But uh, if, if you haven't watched it. But I still think that Xanadu is one of those perfect songs by Rush that... Um, yeah, has really stand the test of time, is really uh, progressive and actually I believe that the poster that I have is actually from the Xanadu music video so correct me if I'm wrong but I believe that Geddy Lee and Alex Lifeson had a 12 string in that music video and well they also have it on, on that poster so I believe it is from the Xanadu music video but you can correct me on that but yeah this song is just really progressive and um, it's really all over the place. Well, not really all over the place. It is really centered. It is, it is really controlled. But it is. It also feels like it takes you on a journey from, well, from here to outer space. It really feels like that. It really feels magical. And this is one of those songs that you have to hear for yourself. It is uh, really heavy. Then again, in parts, then um, you hear some, um, some bells ringing in the background, which really gives it that, um, that melancholic. Uh, tone to it really really great atmosphere to this track really loved it and you should check it out man it is a rush classic uh, speaking of classics we have uh, we have closer to the heart which is i believe one of the most popular songs by rush and yeah this is definitely one of the most popular songs because well it is under the uh, under the three minute mark so it is really commercial and it also felt like Rush was going for a mainstream song here because the song is really mainstream. It starts off with an acoustic guitar and uh, then it slowly comes uh, with an Alex Larson guitar solo, which is great. It it is just uh, well, I, w I wouldn't say it's face melting, but it's it's delicate. It's really beautiful to listen to, and yeah, it is a great classic by them. Although not one of my favorites because it is kind of too popular well xanadu is a bit of the underrated one but close to the heart is usually listened to if we're talking about a feral to kings and well it is a uh, it is the second shortest track of the album still is a great track don't get me wrong but um it, it it is a bit of an overshadowing track because people usually listen to this track and don't listen to the rest although um yeah it, it personally is one of the weakest tracks in my opinion but it still is a great one at that um, I'm gonna skip some songs here and there because, um, well, they didn't do a lot for me or I, I have to listen to them more to really give you an opinion about them. Uh, but number six is the, the final song of the album is Sickness X1, Book 1, The Voyage. This has four parts and this is just, um, this, this is again one of those... <coughs> Uh, epic rush songs that just go uh, just go everywhere and anywhere it is a bit similar to X uh, xanadu but i think that xanadu is really the uh, ultimate song of this album really the centerpiece of the record and sickness x1 is a great uh, closer for this record but i think that xanadu is better because it is more diverse and uh, it's it shows how uh, technical and how uh, creative verse can really be with their songs and uh, sickness was a bit of the same it, it was a bit more avant-garde i would say but uh, the song didn't uh, it, it 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 got to uh, places here and there it, it it got experimental it got progressive like brush is but it's um it, it kind of it it's it kind of is a xanadu part two so it is a good follow -up, but you, you know what they say, you can beat the classics, you can beat the original, they're both classics, but but I think the second track is slightly better and is my favorite track of the album, and uh, Sickness X1 is a great closure and probably my second favorite of the record, but um, but yeah, it was a bit more experimental, so I have to dive a bit deeper in this track to really give you um, more thoughts about it, but for now, I, I still think it is one of their highlights of the of the Rush discography and a great closure at that. Mm, yeah, overall I really enjoyed this record. It was really consistent. It was really uh, short. It, it was only 37 minutes long. So yeah, actually the length I kind of enjoyed it. But maybe if the album was a bit longer, I could get more out of it. 
the the centerpiece of Cinderella Man and Madrigal were really short so maybe if those two songs were a bit longer then maybe the album uh, was a bit better because I didn't get a lot uh, out of these tracks but hey there we are my rating for this album is a 9.1 9.1 still really enjoyed it still a great record um, definitely among the best work though although I prefer the albums in between uh, the um, the first one that I mentioned and the one that uh, came after it, it's predecessor and the upcoming album. But yeah, the album was really great, really enjoyed it. And Rock Dude, thank you for requesting this album because it is a great one at that. But I mean, it is rush. What do you expect? I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, as, if you enjoyed it as well, then uh, yeah, then show it to me. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, the Amon's notes. For more videos like this one, I hope you have enjoyed it. Do all the things you just said and enjoy. Enjoy Rush because, well, they're one of the best prog bands in the world.